Hello and welcome to the Comlex 2 Minute Review. Today's topic is trigeminal neuralgia. This is a high yield topic for the Comlex, so let's review its definition. Well, according to the International Headache Society, it is a paroxysmal attacks of pain which is lasting for a fraction of a second to two minutes, affecting one or more divisions of the trigeminal nerve and fulfilling criteria B and C. Criteria B is pain has at least one of the following characteristics. It's intense, sharp, superficial, or stabbing. It's precipitated from trigger points um, or by trigger factors. And C is attacks are stereotyped in the individual patient. Again, D, there's no clinical evidence of any neurological deficit, and that's important while you're studying questions on the exam. And E, um, it's not attributable to any other disorder. So let's review some of the anatomy here of the trigeminal nerve and mainly trigeminal neuralgia is restricted to the V2 and V3 divisions, the maxillary and the mandibular divisions. Um, here in photo A you see a uh, woman with tongue piercing. Now trigeminal neuralgia is common with patients who have tongue piercings. Um, in B, we're looking at the sensory divisions of the trigeminal nerve, and again, this region here, the maxillary region and the mandibular region, are found to be the most common places where trigeminal neuralgia's trigger points commonly occur. And again, this is the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, here's the ganglion, and here's the ophthalmic nerve, V1, V2 is the maxillary nerve, and V3 is the mandibular nerve. So usually, I mean, what causes trigeminal neuralgia? On the exam, you know, most likely it's going to be idiopathic, but some associations you want to remember are association with multiple sclerosis. Um, also, um, on the anatomy or any, any imaging study, if you see loops or vascular loops of superior cerebral artery or basal artery that directly impinge on the trigeminal nerve root, um, then that could be one of the cause. And finally, any sort of a cancer or amyloid deposition that could, again, um, impinge on the trigeminal nerve root are common. But multiple sclerosis and then any form of impingement on the trigeminal nerve root are some of the things you want to keep in mind. Now let's review the trigger points. There's, these are the specific trigger zones. And again, these can be activated by anything such as cold, air, you know, washing face, brushing teeth, chewing or speaking and so this is a really key point as you're reading through the question. In terms of the diagnosis, you know, some key vignettes include a history of a patient who has recently sought dental evaluation and they present with pain uh, which begins in their mouth after they had a root canal or a tooth extraction and so this type of history again should point you to this diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia among other things. This pain can you know continue for weeks to months and it can subside and then it can reoccur as well. And here's something that's specific to trigeminal neuralgia. It's called Hutchinson's sign. Um, these are mainly skin lesions extending to the tip of the nose at the inner corner of the nose. This is an emergency. It indicates herpes zoster involvement of the trigeminal branch. And so it's associated with ocular complications and you have to get a ophthalmology consultation. So if you see the word Hutchinson sign or if you see this picture with a patient with trigeminal neuralgia then you're looking at an ophthalmic co consultation. In terms of the treatment, again mainly controlling the patient's pain. Carbamazepine is effective. Gabapentin which is used to treat um, other forms of neuro um, neurological pain is not effective here. And um, some of the other medications are oxycarbapine and baclofen and lamotrigine may be beneficial, but carbamazepine is usually first choice. Um, again, if the pain does not subside with medications, microvascular decompression surgery um, has been shown to be the most effective. Um, again, extracranial neurectomy of the trigeminal branches or radiofrequency thermal rhizotomy um, using heat ablation to produce, you know, um, lesions and heal the lesions in the trigeminal ganglion are effective. Also, physical compression or retrogression glycerol rhizotomy are um, other types of surgeries and minimally invasive procedures that can be uh, beneficial to patients. But 
on the test, keep in mind, first line is medications, carbamazepine. Um, and if that doesn't work, then microvascular decompression um, is generally the first choice for surgery. Thank you for listening and visit us at www.comlexflashcards.com for more resources as you study for the Comlex exam. Good luck in your preparation.